Hi there, welcome to today's video. I'm Jeanette with Vivo Vintage Designs. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you enjoy this video and consider subscribing. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get started. All right, so for today's tutorial, I am going to show you how I painted a very simple white lily on white paper using the remaining paints on my palette. These paints are from previous paintings or tutorials that I did, and I decided to use these paints. I do this very often, so I thought I would share this with you. So I've sketched out a very simple lily, and now I'm using my kneadable eraser to lighten the lines. And I tried using the eraser that you see on the right hand side with the red handle, but it really um, marred my paper. So the, I always tell you this, that the kneadable eraser is much more gentle on the paper. All right, so now to the painting. You can see I have a bunch of greens and I would have preferred to use a blue to create the shadows in the white flower, but I really didn't have a lot of blue on the palette. And again, I like to challenge myself to use the paints that remain on my palette. So I'll show you how this turned out, but of course use whatever paints you have left over on your palette. You don't have to use the same colors as I'm using. This is kind of like a challenge, I would say. So I'm using the greens to create the stamen of this lily. And of course I had to Google what the stamens look like because I couldn't remember. So I'm using these light greens that are on my palette. And then you can see I have a darker green and I'm using the darker green on the right hand side while the paint is still wet to add a little bit of shadow to the stamen. And I've switched to a smaller brush and now I'm picking up a little bit of the orange that I have left over and I'm going to create those little nubby things <laughs> in the center of the flower. You think as many flowers as I paint that I would know the correct terminology, but I don't remember. And then I'm going to use the brown that's on the palette and add a little line at the bottom and the right hand side to create some shadow for those little bits. So here you can see I'm adding a, just more, a little more shadow because I didn't think that it was standing out far enough, um, enough and there was no a division between these little stamen. So I wanted to accent that a little bit more. Now I'm painting the stem and you can see I start out with the lighter shade of green and I'm going to paint in that whole stem and then I'm going to use the darker shade of green on the right hand side while the paint is still wet and I'm going to add that to create some shadow and of course right underneath the stem where it meets the flower the petals would be creating a little cast shadow so I'm going to make sure that I add extra green, darker green in that area. So now I was trying to decide what colors to use to paint this. I have a little bit of blue on my palette, but not enough to complete the entire flower. So I started mixing my colors together, hoping to get um, a shade of gray that I would be happy with, but I only ended up with brown. So I just mixed everything together. And you can see that I'm getting different shades of brown. And this was more of, I wanted a kind of gray brown. So I was happy with that. Now 
Now, a lily has this vein in the center of each of the petals. So that's what I started with. I painted two lines and then I'm using a clean damp brush to blend out the hard line or the hard edge on either side and then I'm blending it into the rest of the petal. And immediately you can see that that petal starts to stand out even though I'm using minimal paint. And as I mentioned, I would usually like to use a shade of blue to do this, but it'll work with whatever colors you have on your palette. So again, using the tip of the brush, I painted the two lines in the center of the petal. And then on the outside of the line, I'm using a clean damp brush to blend it out, to soften it, and then to blend it out to the rest of the petal. And making sure that I leave the white space in between. I'm not going to be adding any other detail to these petals. So again, I'm keeping it really simple. This is something anyone can do. So once I soften those lines, you can see that I'm just pulling the paint across the petal and keeping it very light. If I feel that it's too dark, I just clean my brush, blot it on my paper towel, and lift some of the color off of the area. And I don't, I don't think I mentioned this. I'm working on Bao Hung. Academy 100% cotton watercolor paper. And this paper is very textured. It's supposed to be cold press. That's what it reads. However, it feels more like a rough surface. But I do like the quality of the paper. Getting used to the texture is um, a different story. I've gotten used to it by now. And I'm really enjoying using this paper. I'm also using a combination of different brushes. I've got some Rosemary & Co. brushes, my Silver Black Velvet, and some Windsor & Newton Series 7 brushes that I had <laughs> sitting in my little drying rack there. So I'm going to continue with this process to paint in all of the petals. Here I'm painting the under part of a petal that is flipped over. So I'm going to have to add a little bit of shadow so that there's, you can tell that the petal is uh, flipped over. So you can see that I'm adding a heavier consistency just underneath that little flip because the petal would be casting a shadow in that area and then using a clean damp brush to blend it out and soften it. But I'm continuing with the two lines even underneath the petal because you would be able to see that. And you can see how it separates the two areas and it allows you to see that the petal is flipped over. Here I'm doing the same thing. I'm painting the underside of a flipped petal. So I'm going to add a heavier consistency of paint in the areas where there would be shadow. And then using a clean damp brush, I'm just going to blend it out and soften those lines up a little bit. So 
So you can see I am finishing my last petal here. And this is another petal that the tip is flipped over. So I've, again, I've added a heavier consistency. And then I'm using my clean damp brush to lift some of that color, but I'll add a little bit more underneath the part of the petal that's flipped in just a moment. So when you're painting a white flower, really what you're adding is color to the shadow areas. And you can get a lot more detailed, of course, with this type of painting, but I wanted to keep this simple so that you would be able to follow along if you're new to watercolor, that is. So I'm mixing a bunch of the greens that I have on the palette now, and I'm going to start painting the leaves. So you can see that I painted three lines using the darker green on the bottom and then used a clean damp brush to blend it out. And while the paint is still wet, I'm going to add a little bit more of that darker green on the bottom edge of the petal and at the tip. For this leaf, I decided to use the lighter green to paint the, the entire leaf first. And then I'll use the darker green to create some shadows. Now that I've given the petal on the rather the leaf on the right a little time to dry, I'm picking up the uh, darker green and I'm creating some veins in that leaf for a little bit of detail. But I found that it was still a little bit too wet, and what happens if the paint is still too wet and you try to add color? it will blend into the existing paint. So if you give it a little bit of time to dry, when you start adding color, it will not bleed out as much and you'll get more definition to your lines. Even though they'll have soft edges, you'll have a little bit more definition and you'll see what I mean here. You can see now that the paint has dried a little bit. It's still wet, but it's not as wet. So as I add my lines, they don't blend out, they stand out a little bit more. And while I was working on the first leaf, the second one dried a little bit, and you can see that adding the detail is really easy. I'm adding just a little more shadow because it blended into the paint and wasn't really as noticeable as I wanted. And now I'm just going over the details that I added. And that's really pretty and a simple way to add detail without a lot of work. So now I wanted to define those little bits <laughs> in the center of the flower. So I'm using a tiny brush and just outlining one side with a little bit of brown. And then I picked up some more green and adding some definition. So even though I used a brown color, you can still tell that the flower is a white flower. So um, I know a lot of people get confused. I know I sure did. When painting white flowers, how do you paint a white flower on white paper? And uh, I learned that what you're painting in is the shadows. 
So now I'm going to go through my painting and wherever I think I need a little bit more shadow, I'm going to add some uh, a line of the brown paint and then I'm going to clean my brush and blot it on my paper towel and blend that into the rest of the petal. We are nearing the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. It's a very simple way to paint a white lily. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description box and the comment section for links to the products used. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.